how Constantinople changed the Orthodox Christian world. Constantinople, today's Istanbul, is where the ecumenical patriarch has his headquarters. Miodrag Lazarevic reports on Orthodox Church. It's going to be a month since the ecumenical patriarch reinstated the primates of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, the Kievan Patriarch, and the Ukrainian Autocephalous Orthodox Church, thereby heading towards the granting of the autocephaly of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, that is the separation being individual. This decision has already resulted in large-scale changes in Ukraine and the rest of the Orthodox world. So what's happening is something like a schism, like what happened between the Orthodox and the Catholic churches about 1054 AD. The first thing that the Ukrainians did was redistribute property. A part of the deal between the ecumenical patriarch, headed by Patriarch Bartholomew, and the Ukrainian president Petro Poroshenko, an autocephaly was on a number of real estate properties in the center of Kiev. According to several rumors, Metropolitan Emmanuel of France visited the country to review the properties. Their size and their value impressed him greatly. On October 18, Ukrainian Verkovna Rada passed the president's bill to hand over the St. Andrew's Church in Kiev to the Ecumenical Patriarch. Until that moment, this church served as the Ukrainian uh, the U the A U A O C S, which is the Ukrainian Autocephalous Orthodox Church Cathedral. However, its primate metropolitan Makarius supported the presidential decision since his church will be part of the new United Ukrainian Church, and he's already he's ready to sacrifice for unity. Meanwhile, the Ukrainian Autocephalous Church U O C. KP is preparing themselves to obtain new real estate properties. On October 20th, the UOCKP, the Synod, changed the title of its head. As per the new decision, he will also be addressed as the Holy Archimandrite of Kiev, Peshersk, and Pokave Lavras. This property actually belongs to the Ukrainian Autocephalous Church MP. On eve of elections, Filaret seems to demonstrate his supremacy before Macarius and the UOCMP. UOCKP and UAOC are in conflict, which escalated with recent developments since the Thomas will be granted shortly. The UOCMP certainly is in no haste to recognize Constantinople's decision. The clergy of few large eparchies of the Moscow Patriarchate voted for Metropolitan Onufri and against the separation of the Ukrainian uh, church to be individual. Metropolitan Onufri openly claimed that the Constantinople Ecumenical Patriarch actions are uncanonical. In other words, they're not legal under the uh, constitutional uh, dictates the uh, ecclesiastical laws of the Christian Orthodox Church and called for defending the faith because the fact is that the Orthodox, the Christian Orthodox ecumenical patriarch cannot act as the Pope of Rome taking decisions on his own. That's not the way the Orthodox Church works. The Orthodox Church works by being instructed and being led by the Holy Spirit. In other words, there has to be discussions, there has to be analysis of what is going on, there has to be reference to the church doctrine as given by our Lord Jesus Christ, as he dictated to the apostles and his disciples the 40 days between his resurrection and his assumption. He told them how the church should be run. In other words, he gave them a code of law for ecclesiastical law, 
and what should be followed, how it should, everything should be done. And uh, the ecumenical patriarch does not have the right to go against that because it has to do with the doctrine of the faith. So you can understand how very serious this thing is. Uh, the split from the Catholic and the Orthodox Church that took place 1054 AD was exactly, one of the reasons was exactly because of the fact that the Pope of Rome wanted to have supremacy over every other bishop and metropolitan of the church. That's not the way the Orthodox Church works. They have synods, they have councils, they have meetings between them where decisions are taken by vote. That's how the Holy Spirit works and the majority wins. It's a, that's the democratic way of it. And this is not what the ecumenical patriarch has done recently. He took a decision on his own and he seems not to be willing to go back on it. So, bishops will not join the new church without their clergy and diocese. For instance, in the predominantly anti-Russian oblast in western Ukraine, all the clergy and monks unilaterally su support Onufri. At a voting by secret ballot in Odessa, diocese only three priests, three, only three priests, this is very, very significant, only three priests of the 406 were against Metropolitan Onufri. Metropolitan Sophronius of Cherkasi was the only bishop of UOCMP diocese who openly supported autocephaly. Cherkasi diocese voted by secret ballot which showed that nearly all of the local clergy denounced autocephaly movement. So they were against autocephaly. Facing criticism, Metropolitan Sophronius had, the pub publicly, had to publicly state that he would not join the same church with Philaret. In case Philaret and Macarius do not reconcile and the UOCMP bishops stand aside, the Unification Council will fail. The only result yielded by the Ecumenical Patriarch strategy would be an exarchate, an acquiring of the valuable property in the center of Kiev. But where is the promised unity of the Ukrainian Church? I mean, I hope it's not just because the Ecumenical Patriarch wants to acquire very valuable and expensive property. What does he want to do with it? Parcel it off and sell it? Make money? I'm sorry, but my mind is running amok here. The Ecumenical Patriarch has failed to reach concord with the world orthodoxy. In other words, uh, he's doing uh, he's doing whatever he wants against what orthodoxy stands for. It's starting to divide into two camps. Despite the cut ties, Moscow will not be isolated. The patriarchs of Alexandria, Antioch, and Slavic churches are against Constantinople's hasty actions. Constantinople meaning the ecumenical patriarchs' hasty actions on the Ukrainian question, and the conflict is expected to be universal. Uh, Jerusalem also has uh, its own patriarchate. I, I don't see anything referenced here as to what the patriarch of Jerusalem has to say about all this. But anyway, such stands off cannot foster the position of the Greek Orthodoxy. Constant quarrels between the local churches undermines the authority of the Orthodox Church in the eyes of the Roman Catholics and Protestants. As you can understand, this is really bad for the Orthodox Church in the eyes of the other uh, two major Christian churches, the Roman Catholics and the Protestants. The ambiguous events influencing the ecumenical patriarch's reputation also added oil to the fire. First, the contents of the confidential talks August 31st with Patriarch Kirill were leaked. The negotiations were recorded only by Constantinople's representatives, so it could not have been published without prior consent of the ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew. Second, according to many sources, Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko allegedly donated $25 million to the ecumenical patriarch, which was collected from Ukrainian oligarchs. And so in other words, what was this? They paid him off so that Bartholomew, the ecumenical patriarch, can take this stance? What was he bought? He should, uh, 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 if that's what it is, he should immediately be thrown out of the Christian Orthodox Church. Thrown out. So Poroshenko allegedly donated $25 million to 
uh, the ecumenical patriarchy to Bartholomew, collected from Ukrainian oligarchs. In the official photos of the meeting between Rostislav Pavlenko, the former deputy head of the presidential administration, and a big case could be seen near his All Holiness, that is, <laughs> ecumenical uh, patriarch Bartholomew. A big case? Or was he, he took it in cash? In Ukraine, this caused a furious reaction, and there were attempts to initiate a corruption probe against Patriarch Bartholomew and President Poroshenko. Well, somebody should look into this. I hope, so. I hope President Trump sends somebody to do this. Uh, now, recently, a scandal relating to the possible autocephaly of the Macedonian Orthodox Church were discussed within Orthodox circles, as one Greek newspaper claimed the delegation of the Serbian Orthodox Church, Macedonia does not want to stay under its jurisdiction, came to Istanbul and negotiated, quote unquote, with the ecumenical patriarch, after which Constantinople, meaning here the head of the ecumenical patriarchy in Istanbul, allegedly refused to bestow the Thomas to Macedonia and Fana immediately published a refutation. Above all, the ecumenical patriarch, Bartholomew, is quite aggressive towards towards the Russian Orthodox Church without presenting grounds for his accusations. Of course not. Why should he present grounds? He was just paid off $25 million. Thus, he has recently blamed Moscow for the dissemination of well-paid articles and black propaganda without clarifying what he meant. Obviously, a series of scandals and aggression towards other churches negatively affect ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew's reputation. Moreover, it looks like that the ecumenical patriarch strives, quote, not for the unity of the world orthodoxy, but for its own supremacy over other churches, end quote. So, in other words, he wants to act like the Pope of Rome, but on the side of the orthodox churches. That's not going to fly in the face of orthodoxy. No way, Jose. A situation with Pearl in Constantinople's crown, the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America, is worth discussing. Last summer, some of its influential supporters spoke about independence following the example of Ukraine, but these talks were diluted. Meanwhile, for several months, ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew of the Fanar has been trying to replace Archbishop Demetrius of America. Against the background of the Ukrainian autocephaly, an open war with Moscow, the attempts to restrict the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America's independence and to remove its primate looked very cynical. Otherwise, it can urge the Archdiocese clergy and laity to unite for independence. The rupture between the Russian Orthodox Church and the canonical patriarchy has negatively affected a lot of aspects in cooperation with the Russian Orthodox Church, Constantinople, that is the Ecumenical Patriarchate, organized a number of active interconfessional negotiations. But since Moscow, that is the Russian Orthodox Church, refused to take part in them, a future of such relations, first of all, with Roman Catholics are not that promising. Moreover, the talks led by the Ecumenical Patriarch will not be all Orthodox. And this can be a pretext for predominantly anti-ecumenical churches to abandon such interconfessional dialogue. Besides, the ecumenical patriarch's actions will affect the Orthodox diaspora, that is, throughout the world. Without the Russian Orthodox Church, it's done a lot of work outside of Russia. Now, the first uh, uh, Christian Orthodox churches in North America, for example, were from the Russian Orthodox, and they were also martyrs and saints of that new world on the side of the West on the western coast, from Alaska all the way to, down to California, the, even New York and uh, Brooklyn. The assemblies of bishops won't be that effective. At this moment, it's unclear what awaits us in the future, but one thing is obvious. The Orthodox world has changed, and it will never be the same. Yes, Constantinople, that is, the ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew, has won in the battle of supremacy, becoming, quote, the first without equals, and quote, but the price is too high. That's not going to stand. They will not let him be the next pope. That's not going to take place. 
So I'll leave a link below for you for this on the Orthodox Church. And also I want to tell you that the image that you see here with the um, lights, that pole that you see on in the center of the image, which is next to the um, holy holy um, uh, icons, there's a uh, vertical pole with a black stone in it. That is part of the pillar of uh, the flagration of our Lord Jesus Christ. Half of it is in Jerusalem and the other half is right here in this pillar in uh, the Ecumenical Patriarch Church of St. George in Istanbul in Constantinople. I have been there three times and I have um, adored that uh, relic of our Lord Jesus Christ and it has it exhumes a scent of pain and myrrh. And uh, I hope all Christians uh, take this as uh, a chance to pray for the unity of the Christian Church, which is the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is, after all, the prayer our Lord Christ gave to our Holy Father.